like I think my colleague mentioned earlier in the earlier segment about education. I think education is a major issue for young people. How do we, we have countries in the Caribbean like Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago that have free tertiary level education. Why are our governments not trying to plan to um, better educate our uh, human capital? I mean, I think, you know, our governments have to look at future planning. Um, and I think um, right now there is a lack of it. And I think prior to that, under our Christie administration, you had future planning, basically. And I think um, it was evident with urban renewal, um, whereas you had, you took young men and you gave them, or young children for that matter, in, urban, in, in the inner city, and you placed them in things that encourage them to, to be a part of something good and positive. And I think that's what we have to look at in terms of governance, is that the future of the country depends on us planning and not necessarily looking um, behind our backs on when is the next election date. I think that's what is happening now. You know, we heard the issue today that uh, about legalizing gambling. Now, I think it is an issue that needs to be dealt with, not to be, um, you know, one that is waited until after another general election. Mr. Forbes, you won in South Andros um, in 2007, uh, but your party lost the general election. Uh, could it be that the Bahamian electorate mm -hmm. did not see a clear vision of where the Bahamas was headed? In 2007? Yes. I don't think that would have been the case at all. I think Mr. Christie um, spoke to it very candidly. And many of our people at that time, I think there were a lot of things that are happening. I don't want to lay blames that in no particular direction. Um, it's alleged many things would have happened. And you know some of those things. We'll speak about those things off the record. But I mean, obviously we know what well, we speak on the, on the record. No, no, I, I don't want to go down that path. Mm -hmm. I want to take it, you say, let's speak to the, to the future. I want to be progressive in my thought processes today. So my thing is, let's look in a different direction, but we wouldn't go back there. So therefore, to start things off, we would make sure the, um, the parliamentary registrar office and those things would hopefully be, be this time in, in, intact, um, in, in, in good state, in a good state of affairs there. We got to start there, and also we got to look at our country at the political arena. Whether we want to head into being a republic or have some kind of hybrid system develop in our society, younger people are asking for more openness and accountability. Um, my son would say to me, "Daddy, if you you know how um, the prospective judge um, Kagan on Capitol Hill, for example, having to go around and talk with the various um, senators and congressmen, especially the senators, for me to become a judge before the process starts next week." Here in the Bahamas, we hear about a judge being named, and you hear something in the paper, next thing you know the judge's name. Um, in the whole political process, do we want a president or a prime minister? Where do we go next? Um, the whole issue of um, having members of parliament having a common block where they can all be, where you could find them, where they could be accountable. Not having this minister here or this member of parliament there, have a common block that we see in, in developing countries. Um, also forging better, um, we must now focus on education like Mr. Sargent mentioned. What's going to be our focus? We must realize at the end of the day. Educationally, we are not where we want to be. We've been caught in this conundrum for too long, where we keep on straddling the fence, pouring lots of money every year from our budget, where we're we going, we going to hear them all from the Prime Minister and their education, but not seeing the real returns, not empirical data on education and the returns from education. And we've come, we must come to realize by now, a lot of our people are challenged academically in the mainstream. So now we must then focus on technical and vocational education in the main, and we must be serious about it. The family islands we're hurting in a major way in that regard in the family islands. Many persons are leaving the islands, no opportunities are there. So therefore the new, the new Bahamas must also look at getting our persons to return to the family islands, so they redevelop the islands, especially Andros. I need them to come back home, but come back home to what? The opportunities must be there. Financing for small business and, med and medium, small and medium-sized businesses must be there. Our people who have the responsibility for these various um, arenas must also believe in our people. We must start there. We can't believe if you are a small black boy from over the hill, you can't do certain things. That's our problem. And we don't give our people a chance. And we'll give them $5,000 to get started. Mr. Jones, you know better. You're a real businessman. It just can't happen there. So we've got to be open to a whole new vista of thinking in our society for us to be now really ready for the challenges in the 21st century, sir. We are talking about perspective for the future direction of the country. Um, in the 50s uh, and early 60s, three quarters of the population of the Bahamas lived in the family islands. Yes. Um, a quarter lived in New Providence. Uh, the fact right. of the matter is that uh, we've had this urban pull for a long time, and people are still leaving the family yes. islands polyzonical. Um, 
in Aucklands and Crooked Island. Uh, I think the population between those two big islands, about 700 people, 350 or so in Crooked Island, about 400 in Aucklands. Um, do you see a vision uh, for this urban pull to be reversed? I think what's going to attract people back to the islands is um, opportunities. We have to have infrastructure and opportunities there. But do you for see people. the vision? I do. I believe that the resources and the future of the Bahamas is in the family islands. I think that we have underutilized the family island potential for wealth and economic growth of our country. I think we have to begin to look at it. I think Mr. Christie started a program with, with um, the, the, the programs, the anchor programs on each of these family islands. But I think, Mr. Jones, the future of the Bahamas will come back to what our leader started and he was criticized on, consultation and working together. As I said to you, the Bahamas has now created a gene pool of excellent young people who have brilliant ideas about how we can utilize these islands and how we can utilize these islands for future growth of the Bahamas. We have to begin to do that. I saw in the paper this morning, interesting enough, that Mr. Ingram said after much consultation, Please note, consultation, he's decided not to go forward with legalized gambling. Isn't that interesting, Mr. Jones? We are now realizing the importance of consultation. It is the key to the future of the Bahamas. God has not ordained one man with the knowledge to do everything. But what he has done is, he has allowed other persons around you with the gifts and the knowledge to help you to grow and to, to accomplish these Who goals. Who got us Bahamas? Where <laughs> is the Bahamas going? Um, where's the Bahamas going, Ryan Pinder? Well, under, under the current framework in, in, in policies, we're, we're going down. Um, under a progressive and visionary government that the PLP will lead after the next general election, the, the Bahamas has nowhere to go but up. You speak about uh, the family islands, but you also spoke earlier about agriculture. Um, we have to understand that my colleagues are right. You need to provide opportunities in the family islands for people to live, for people to sustain and provide for their families. But that comes through economic vision. That comes through vision of a government to say, we have no proper agricultural base in the family islands. We have no sufficient form of growing and then selling. We have no linkages. We just don't have the infrastructure in place. Um, and the infrastructure can be put in place and, and at, at a rapid pace. And by providing these opportunities, you see an expansion nationally, not just in Nassau, but nationally, where you might have people say, you know, I would rather live in the islands. Oh, and look under this program, I could have my own hydroponics farm, and I could be able to distribute my product to Atlantis. But and agriculture declined um, during the time your party was in government, between 2002 and 2007. And, agricul and agriculture will go forward when we're in government after 2012. What assurance, that I could what assurance guarantee you have? Because we have, the, we have discussed internally programs and policies to promote the sector, to link the sector with our tourism product. We spoke at length earlier about linkages between other industries and our tourism product. And that is how you diversify on the low-hanging fruit, as I think my colleague Frank Smith said. And by putting in these programs and policies of promoting modern-day agriculture in the family islands, but linking it to our tourism product, that's how you create economic empowerment, and that's how you grow a nation, not just Nassau, but a nation. Thank you very much. We have to bring this segment to a close. And we have one final segment coming up, uh, still talking about the future direction of our country, the Bahamas. We take this final break, and we'll come right back. Thank you. Japan Direct Auto Sales. Your banner year for a car you always dreamed of in quality style. Select from a grand variety of pre-owned, low-mileage Nissan Sentras in stunning colors that are priced at very affordable prices, five to $7,000. Toyotas starting from $7,000. They also have name brand Wyndham's, Avalon's, Honda's, and CRV Jeeps. Japan Direct will see you through in an excellent guaranteed vehicle. Phone Japan Direct Auto Sales today at 394-0439 or fax to the 394-2573. Open 9 to 530, Monday through Saturday. Go roll away in your new vehicle today. La Rose Signature Cosmetics has revolutionized the face of Bahamian women of all skin tones, restoring a breathtaking younger looking skin. 
lines, targeting and smoothing expression lines for elegant sophistication and flawless radiance. Keeping every woman looking as young as she feels.